past eight. The Radio Whammo Breakfast. TV on the radio with Hamish Coleman Ross from stuff.co.nz. Been a few weeks and he's back. In fact, it oh. might, might have been a month or something. Came oh, coming mate, so morning. sorry. It's it's been crazy <laughs> out there in the world. Um, you know, work's been keeping me very busy, uh, but it's been great. It's been amazing. Well, you're the um, you're, you're the video journalist um, at stuff.co.nz. So it's ta- it's take takes you all over the country. Of course, the Christchurch yes. earthquake, and we we spoke to you when you were down there. Fashion week, and yes, a few yep. other things and I've as just, well. Just this morning, finished uh, doing some coverage on Commonwealth Games. Well, let's let's start, start off with Commonwealth Commonwealth Games. Yeah, They're now hailing uh, it as uh, you know, some kind of success. Well, when I think it's a success in the fact that although there were lots of uh, things that weren't quite up to par, and and there weren't, um, but I think they're hailing as a success in so much as there wasn't a major incident. That You know, no bridge fell down with people on it, or, you know, the, the pool didn't spring a leak and all the water drained out as the divers were falling off the uh, diving board and no, hitting no concrete. One, no one found a turd on their bed? Well, I don't know. Well, well yeah. You know, they they're probably still reported. partying. There's probably t- still time for that, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> but at the end of the day, no, there was no major incident. And no. nobody died. Yeah. So you know, what about uh, because um, to be fair, I, I didn't. I mean, in past Commonwealth Games and Olympic Games, I've I've actually watched quite a bit just because sure. I think the timing of it was well, it was good, yep. and it was on free to air TV all the time. Yep. What was the deal? What what was Prime actually showing? So Prime, what well, Sky did it this way: they had six channels going on all up, um, and uh, five of those were specially dedicated to the Commonwealth Games coverage, and then Prime sort of cut to a, a you know because it's free to wear, cut to a sort of selected feed, much as you'd be used to as what you would have seen on TVNZ. Yeah. But by having these six feeds, you know, you, if you were really into lawn bowls, like really into lawn bowls, you could sit there and watch the lawn bowls. And if you were really into watching every single track and field event, you could sit yeah. there and watch. That's cool. And, and I think that's quite good in so mm. much as uh, there are different people out there who do enjoy different codes of sport. And, mm. and, and that's what it was. And it was. It was a celebration of sport. Two things about it. My favourite part of the games, all up, was seeing our Paralympians being able to compete against uh, able-bodied people. I got a real kick out of seeing that. Is that new, is it? I don't know if it's new to Commonwealth Games. It's definitely different to how the Olympics do it. Yeah. But, you know, the Paralympics was always about, you know, having people compete, you know, therefore that they're, they're able to come and compete and have that part. And being able to cut from, you know, the 100-metre sprint, able-bodied men's, mm. um, to the Paralympic shot put, you know, you start looking and, and you're like, man, mm. you know, I'm seeing amazing people on different uh, levels of the spectrum. But at the same yeah. time, if you're there to celebrate the amazingness of humanity then that I totally got that and and I did I, I felt quite emotional watching it did you? did indeed biggest cock up it, of I, the games though oh yes biggest cock up of the games happened uh, with the um, the medal ceremony for the uh, what has been called the greatest game of netball ever played in which our silver ferns in second extra time yeah. took it out against uh, Australia 90 was, minutes or something oh yeah. it was amazing I was, I was standing there in the, in the newsroom going ah ah <laughs> the whole time it was great. I, I saw tw- I saw Twitter doing that. I, I didn't yeah, watch it myself, no, it yeah. was actually that amazing. And uh, after all that, um, there the, there's our girls standing there with the gold medals, you know. And now please stand for the New Zealand national anthem. Yes. Da da da. And then Sky cut to some sting, oh, like no. going off to the deli gates, like, hey, hey, what? hey, guys, where, where the hell's my national anthem? Oh. And then quickly, obviously, someone in the control room had realised what I had done, and it came back, and I was like. Yep, that was a cock up. I think there was some inexperienced person in the control room like, "What's this lame music?" There was also an accusation that there'd been a TV uh, news, a, a, a television journalist from New Zealand had smeared mud on a wall um, while doing a live cross mm. the, to make it look a bit dirtier. Yeah. But uh, that, those have been uncorroborated. Okay. Well, what, what about another cock up uh, this week on Outrageous Fortune? Oh, this one I love: the C bomb, that lovely little four-lettered C word that yes. has become the most offensive word you can say on television. Yep was played on Outrageous Fortune. Now, Outrageous Fortune using something like the C-bomb wouldn't actually surprise me all that much. Like, the, no, I'm they're, sure they're I've heard it before. Sense. I thought I'd heard it before too. Yeah. Could be wrong, but it wouldn't surprise me if one of those characters said it. Now, TV3 received complaints and they've come out and said that it was a broadcasting error. Now, hang on. When, when, is, when was Outra- Outrageous Fortune? Tuesday. Yeah, but no, wasn't it normally at 9.30? Yeah. Well, it's now at 8.30 or something. Yeah, it is. So I still thought that, after eight thirty you could drop the C bomb though, or is it if you got to wait till nine thirty? The Broadcasting you do that? Standards Authority are doing something really weird at the moment. They're they're 
suddenly they're changing tact and they're coming down hard on a few things. There was a a, a, a complaint that was upheld against Band of Brothers, of all things. Now, Band of Brothers originally... Oh, no, I did. I saw that complaint go through. That yeah. was fun. It originally screened in, in 2000 or 2001 yeah. or something like that, and it's played a million times on TV since then. But someone complained about... A, um, a, a sex scene, a pretty tame sex scene as sex scenes go on telly but anyway, someone complained to get, uh, about it because it was around about 8.40 and it was upheld which I thought was completely bizarre. I think bizarre. I saw this, yeah, I remember seeing this go through and, and I mean for a repeat to get it, you know, maybe, what does yeah. it say? Are we getting more conservatives as the years well, go on? Well, the board uh, I don't know if they're under pressure from somewhere else mm. about stuff well, they, they think there's some kind of sea change in, in New Zealand's moral fabric at the moment. A moral fiber. Hey, well, what I want to say is if you really do like offensive New Zealand humor and you do like kind of uh, piss take um, on, on the television industry, go on YouTube and check out for a online web series produced out of Wellington called The Project. Okay. And it's done by a uh, crew of guys called Pigville Productions. Now, the acting is okay. Mm. Um, but the story is fantastic. There are some amazing bits of comedy in it, and the sea bomb is littered right through it. It's why it'll never see the light of day on television, but it's very well put together. Go and watch it, The Project, a complete piss take about some guys who are just about making it to the TV industry, but not quite. There ain't no broadcasting standards online, is there? Not indeed. No, uh, eruption. There should, oh. there's, now, now, there should be some broadcasting standards against this, <laughs> just, for, <laughs> just for quality. Okay, so Eruption um, it was produced last year. It was actually shot behind my flat where I was living last was year. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, we actually did a bit of a scam on them. Sorry if they're listening. Well, and, some uh, lovely, lovely Auckland days, by the way. Well, some we, we, nice we told days. them that um, we, were gonna, we were actually going to cut down the tree, but we told them we were going to get the cut tree cut down in two days' time, and they'd already been filming for three and had another three to go, and they're like, oh. Continuity. They're like, if you, if you hold off, we'll pay for your tree to be cut down. And we <laughs> Wow, okay. Um, so thanks very much, Eruption. Um, but no, I mean, they, they, there was a lot of criticism that they used very uh, stylistic characters. You know, they were all cliched characters. Mm-hmm. And I, when I was watching it, I couldn't help but feel as though it was kind of reminded me of a hokey uh, public service announcement type education film. And even then, I didn't find all that educational. Ed, what are they called? Edu, edutainment or edutainment. something? Edutainment. Oh, well, you yeah. know... I think most of the country were just sort of when they were watching Eruption and they are watching Auckland burn to the ground, probably just sat there and went, yay. Good. The, uh, the natural um, <laughs> comparison was with Aftershock, which was the one set yeah, in Wellington yeah, about yeah, the earthquake yeah. in Wellington. And I think that was done by the same people. So and I think it, Aftershock was done yeah. better. Yeah, well, I think so. And um, maybe Aftershock was better researched. I don't know. But it's interesting because uh, we've got Eruption this week. All hot on the heels, I must say, of the Christchurch quake, although I'm sure this is just coincidence. But then on Sky, I saw that the blockbuster movie premiering Sunday night is 2012. Oh, it's all about yeah. death and destruction, natural disasters One as well. One I haven't seen, won't, I won't see. I don't so think. I think eruption, uh, good idea. Um, if you really want to find out what's going to happen, go to the museum at the Auckland Museum. They've got a wonderful yeah. volcano, volcano exhibition. But what it did bring home to me is the social aspect of, um, so, of, of using uh, social media and TV together. Twitter was hilarious. In fact, the only oh, reason was great. The, the only reason why I kept watching the program was because Twitter was being so funny about it. There was if there was the hashtag um it was uh, hashtag eruption. So yeah. if you if you search for hashtag eruption, you'll see this tweet stream from the night of people just I read you know, through the laying into this great. TV program. It they was fantastic. Great, you know, and and I think when if if you are a broadcaster, that's a fantastic way of gauging because the people that are on there are usually people that have obviously got time. They talk to other people. Yeah, they they're engaging themselves in the media and, and, and forming an opinion. So I would, uh, if I was a broadcaster, I'd be jumping on those hashtags. Yeah, absolutely. Big time. Check that out. And Wanna Ben is also a new show. Wanna Ben. So we've got Wanna Ben, which uh, Bill, and, Bill and Ben, um, it's Ben from Bill and Ben Pulp Sport. Yeah. And so Ben's going out solo, trying to find a job, trying on different roles here, there, and everywhere. Now, I kind of liked it. Um, it's a bit hokey. But mm. then I know I kind of understand that you know that kind of awkward Kiwi humour has a real place, mm. and TV Three obviously is, um, in the last year or so we've seen them really foster um, Kiwi comedy. So I'm mm. a big fan of it in that respect. But it just kind of it, it was very hit and miss. It had some yeah, it had some really funny mom- moments, but um, but then some some real like uh, just it fell, lost fell my flat. attention very mm. quickly, mm. very quickly. The whole, so, I, I I can't get into New Zealanders doing musicals. Either, you know, like put, making funny songs and stuff never works for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. You and I might be in the minority, but Flight of the Concords liked the show, kind of didn't like, like the, the song songs, so much. Yeah. Mm. We've got time to talk quickly about Glee? Yes. So, um, talking, talking about musicals. Talking about musicals. Now, 
last year I was a big big proponent. I waved the get the Glee flag big time. Yeah. Big time. And yeah. I I I wouldn't let anybody say a bad word against it. I really felt that since they came back for the second half of their first season, something had changed. And I think that the reason I liked the first half of the first series was mm. because they had a real underdog element to them. The show was new. They were all unknown stars. And, you know, I really liked that. I liked that I was getting to kind of know them. They came back, and it's almost like, huh, we're number one rating on Fox. We must be something special. Yeah. And it started to come through in their portrayal. And, you know, whole episodes dedicated to, you know, Lady Gaga and Madonna and Britney Spears. I, I, I was sort of like, you know, oh, that ain't my thing. I kind of liked the storyline with some good old music in it's there. Middle America, though. So anyway, they approached. Uh, well, they, they were crowing about the fact that everyone they had approached had never said no to them. Hmm. You know, to put a song on. Yeah. Well, they approached Kings of Leon. I'd love to know which song. And uh, Kings of Leon said, nah. if we were going to if we were going <laughs> to sell out, we'd do it so much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so they they said no. And now the Gorillas um, have come out. The Gorillas frontman's come out and said, yeah, good you on know, them. I wouldn't do it either. I wish that uh, Journey had said no, they, because Glee has totally murdered Journey's <laughs> um, very famous and fantastic song. Don't from stop believing. The, don't stop believing. Yeah, and you know, which which was used in the closing scenes of the, the Sopranos. Do you remember right. that? Yes, I do. Just amazing. Just and you know, just just that was actually how I found stuff. that song. Yeah, as a young youth. Well, Glee has gone and murdered it. So yeah, and and the nice thing that um, I think I, said, I think I think I I, I tweeted out at the time I want to if Glee had a face I'd punch it. Uh, well, <laughs> the, the head man from Gorillas he came out and said Glee is a show that nobody will remember or talk about in ten years time, and I think he's right. Hmm. Okay, hey, let's go out on something that you're um you think is quite cool at the moment is uh, Conan <laughs> O'Brien. Well, of course, he's the, back. The, the talk show guy. Yeah. yeah. Had a terrible year. Um, had a terrible year this year. Really, um, he tried to do his own show, taking over Jay Leno's spot. Didn't work. Jay Leno got moved to prime time. Didn't work. I mean, just bad times all around. Anyway, he's back, and he's a very, very funny man. If you don't know who Conan is, he short short answer. He wrote some of the funniest episodes of The Simpsons ever, including one of my favourites, the monorail episode. Oh, yeah. yeah, he wrote that. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, you know, so he's a funny Fantastic. guy. Anyway, he's you, made you this- know, New Zealand's got it getting its own monorail. System. Oh, I know. Yeah. Thanks, Lynn. Cool. Yeah. Lynn, baby. Yeah. You and I are going to pay for it, though, probably, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. Anyway, have a listen to this. This is great. This is his new promo. All right. Drop Canyon, a 900 foot sheer fall. That's not all. We're loading the trunk of this baby with 80 pounds of plastique, the most powerful explosive in the world. Yeah! Dousing it with 40 gallons of gasoline, packing it with illegal fireworks from the state of New Hampshire, and up front, 600 pounds of unpopped popcorn. Yeah, that's the stuff! And all the while, I'll be accompanied by the world-famous Habsburg Chamber Orchestra. Hey, maestro, crank it up! Hey. <laughs> this is brilliant. Go and um, and check this out. Go and search for it. Conan O'Brien drives an explosive-packed car off a cliff, which is, I guess, eventually is what's going to happen. Go and check that out on YouTube. Hamish Coleman-Ross, thanks so much for uh, hey, good to be back. coming on in. Yeah, thanks for coming back. Right now, here 